Hey everybody, and welcome back to Mondays with me, Dr. Crystal. It's been super exciting reading your guys' feedback about this Scrubs Reaction series and all the excitement around it, so I'm gonna continue on with it today. I'm not here to waste any more of your time, so we are gonna continue on right now with season one, episode three. Do, 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 do. I don't know why I came to watch Turk in surgery when I could have caught a few minutes of sleep. I guess I just haven't seen much of my best friend lately. Still, it's not like I'm desperate or anything. <laughs> mm, look, I've been attending for three years. Okay, already found something. So in the OR, when you are like going down to the different OR rooms, there's like a certain line where if you go past it, you have to have like a hairnet or a scrub cap, like you have to have the net on your hair. And I learned that very early in my surgical rotation, because if you cross that line, people will be on you like hawks. You have to be wearing that cap. And so he could potentially be standing there watching a surgery, but somebody would have caught him. He would have had to have the cap on. Here's here. What makes you think you know better? In my gut, I know I'm right. We need to make this decision now. Fine, then it's on you. Yes, it is. Nurse. Erasure. Yes, doctor. I try to discover ORs are like this. They are literally like this. So it really depends the surgeon and the type of surgery you go into. I found that like in ortho surgeries where there's like drills and hammers and stuff, it's like a lot of rock music, rock music, rap music, that kind of stuff. Some surgeons go with like the slow jams, but when you're like a medical student in there and they pick that kind of music, you're like, it's going to be a long surgery. It's going to put me right to sleep just standing there watching. I hate this song. Me too, man. Me too. In the surgeries I've been in, they always wait to turn on the music until after the patient is asleep. But who knows? I don't know what they do in every OR. Maybe, maybe this happens some places. I'm no Superman. It's weird, but a hospital room can actually be kind of a romantic place. Maybe it's the soft green glow of a heart monitor, or the way the moonlight reflects off a bedpan. Our shifts keep overlapping on Friday nights. It's the closest thing I've had to a date recently. Well, I had a great time tonight. Oh yeah, me too. So, can I page you? <laughs> Better, and don't do the whole two-day waiting thing. Oh, baby, I don't play by the rules. So, uh, good night. Wait a second, is she joking? Because if she's joking and I kiss her... <laughs> Of course, if she's not joking. <laughs> Come on, I don't do this for all the doctors. Yes. Look, this guy's gonna need. This escalated quickly. I thought they were going to play like the, the best friend thing for a little while. So I'm, I don't know. All right, here we are. We're, we're moving fast. Go JD. The other thing is, I don't think anyone would do this in front of a patient. Even with the patient sleeping right there, they could wake up any minute. And yeah, I mean, Heather and I started dating in residency and I just can't imagine. 40 MEQ is a KCL and go ahead and grab me when you get the results. You got it. Oh. And his TV is broken, so when you two do start tagging each other, least you can do is wake him up and let him watch. In my experience, when two friends miss an opportunity like this, you've got exactly 48 hours to get the kiss. Otherwise, one of you's gonna overthink it. Okay, she's gonna overthink it. And then you end up permanently stuck in the friend zone. I'll see ya. You're such a girl. I'm just a little lonely, you know? I guess because I haven't really been hanging out with Turk since he's been dating Carla. First of all, who's Turk? And don't answer. Look, if you have a medical question for me, I'm forced by hospital policy to answer you. However, if you ask me about a personal problem, I'm going to start doing this. Ow! You seem unhappy. I like that. I try to dis- I 
But why doesn't the janitor like JD? I, I haven't been able to figure that out. They haven't had any like bad interactions really. He just like has taken a dislike for him. I don't know. Maybe we'll find out later. T Man, I'm gonna get my grub on. Wait, he's gonna go eat. Ah. So surgery went okay? Yeah, it was cool. Dude, I got to close for the first time ever. Ever. <laughs> the human body is so disgusting. No, not yours. Yours is stunning. We should go out and celebrate, you know, tear it up like we used So when he says he got to close, that means, you know, you make an incision to start a surgery. And at the end, you got to close everything up. And so for like the new interns or like sometimes even the medical students, they let you close the incision at the end of the surgery. And that's like, cool, if you haven't done it before. Um, I, I think everyone else in the OR hates it because usually if you're new, it takes you a lot longer. So it's like, they're letting the med student close. We're going to be here for another 20 minutes, even though the surgery is over. But um, it's cool to see him excited about this. He's an intern, he gets to do it for the first time, but you got to wait till the older guy leaves. So you don't look like a nerd being, being excited about that. Don't let it be awkward. Do something cute. Cover her eyes and say, guess who? <coughs> guess who? I can't breathe. Simotis, the severe swelling of the lips exhibited by this patient might be an indication of what? Angioedema. Well done, sport. And what treatment would you recommend, uh, Dr. Uh, Dorian? Combination of steroids and any of several antihistamines. a boy, sport. Now then, what would you recommend the patient stay away from, uh, Dr. Uh, Reed? Uh, my first guess would be uh, shellfish. Right you are, sweetheart. I could kind of see what was going on in Elliot's Sweetheart. Ooh. Ooh, that would have got me too. Oh, he's saying good job to the guys. And then he says, nice job, sweetheart. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah. I also think it's weird that he asked her what they should tell the patient to stay away from because angioedema could have any number of triggers. I mean, shellfish potentially could be one, but it's not like the, the only thing. And so I wouldn't just jump to telling a patient to stay away from shellfish. You would have to figure out what caused their specific angioedema. Ten. Right you are, sweetheart. Exactly. <laughs> Creepy. Creepy. I'm so lucky I met you. Maybe next time her mom could come. Dude, you won't even know she's here. Except she laughs at stupid stuff sometimes and that kind of makes me laugh. <laughs> it's stupid. Because it's such so stupid. Oh, come on. Tonight's still about us. Whatever. I don't care. Turk, you want to go hang out in your room? Poor JD. I feel like I'm saying that all the time. Poor JD. Everyone knows how it feels to end up being the third wheel. The bestie gets in a new relationship. You don't get as much attention. It's sad. We've all been there. I guess sweetheart is kind of innocuous. Okay. Here's what you're going to do. Go right down there and confront Kelso. Really? Oh, absolutely. Never mind that he is the chief of medicine for the entire hospital. He'll have a whole new level of respect for you. Honestly? Yes, you can't have sexist terms like that floating around here. You go get him. Okay, I know he's being facetious and telling her this, but honestly, she should confront him or she should report this to somebody if she feels uncomfortable, if it's making her feel like he's being demeaning. And I know that's way easier said than done. He's her superior, but stuff like this happens all the time and it's not okay. And I think that these days we're a little bit better at addressing these things and preventing these things from happening. But I don't know, I guess we'll see what happens. I still want to get an EKG. Let's do cardiac enzymes Castle, and- uh, Sweetheart, no. Um, uh, and an aspirin. Uh, a lot of my work has become second nature to me. The only problem is that it gives me too much time to think. Look, man, I'm surgery and you're medicine. This isn't college anymore. Things have to change. Well, I, I know relationships change. I guess I just thought yours and mine never would. What's going on? Okay, two things on this little part. So he said he wanted an EKG, cardiac enzymes, and an aspirin. So he's looking for probably like a, a heart attack, a myocardial infarction. So cardiac enzymes are something we check because they elevate when the heart is injured. And obviously, like sometimes you can see uh, evidence of a heart attack on an EKG as well. So sounds like that's what he's looking for. 
other thing, his vision that he was having. Somebody mentioned in the comments last time that he has a lot of these visions, so starting to see that. Really, there's a huge difference. When you stitch a patient, wind up sewing a sheet to him, that's an accident. When he tries getting up, the whole gurney collapses, breaking his front teeth. That's a lawsuit. Say it with me. Accident, lawsuit. Accident, lawsuit. So, what is it, sweetheart? Isn't it sad that that is what they're having to think about? I feel like I, I honestly think about this a lot and I think a lot of other providers do just because of the culture in this country of suing, suing, suing. I feel like it's so common and I don't know any doctor. I've never met a doctor who isn't always just trying to act in the patient's best interest. So it's always really unfortunate when people get sued because I don't think anyone is out there trying to hurt anyone. Although I did listen to a podcast, Dr. Death, I think it was called Dr. Death. That was scary. I think he was purposefully hurting people, but that's few and far between. It's that, it's the sweetheart thing. It just doesn't hit me right. I'm a doctor and it seems sort of disrespectful. Oh, I've always called the young men sport and the young ladies sweetheart. But you call Becky sport. Oh, well, I am so sorry, sport. It must be one of those bad habits I've developed after working in the medical field for over 30 years. 30 years? But you look so young. <laughs> you might even be septic. Well, we won't know anything until the lab gets his blood work back. If he's septic, there's a chance they'll have to reopen this guy. Of course, there's also a chance he could die. I've seen this before. Gauze, sponges, some young surgeon left something in this man. No, no, I, I know the guy that closed. He'd never be that careless. Okay, uh, excuse me, sorry. Um... The versions I'm watching are separated into like five parts, and so sometimes it cuts right in the middle of a scene. Kind of annoying. Has anyone seen my keys? No? Okay, how about my wallet? Anyone? I've never seen that before. Honestly, though, the person who's closing, if he's really just closing the outside incision, He's not the guy responsible for something being left inside. That is whoever's doing the surgery. They're supposed to do counts at the end to ensure something like that doesn't happen, but we'll see. Hey, I was just dreaming about you. You were, oh, we were. Hey, you got a few minutes? Don't move. No, 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 don't move. Missed opportunities. His countdown is running. He's gonna lose his chance. Well, Mr. Captain, though, your arrhythmia is much better. Everything looks just great, actually. You sound surprised. <laughs> well, okay, it has nothing to do with you, but I had a little run-in with Dr. Kelso yesterday, so when he switched me over to you, I just thought it'd be a difficult case. Go on, I'm listening. Excuse me while I, I go check on another penis. A patient. Um, well, he's, another, he's a, a penis patient. I wish I could say I had not been in situations like this before, but people are very different in respect to their levels of modesty. And all the time, people just, you know, I'm standing there. I'm about to leave the room so they can get changed so we could take a look at whatever we need to, even if the problem is in that area. And they just strip right in front of me. And I'm like, hold on. Let me let me get a chaperone. I'll step out. You can change. But yeah, I've had some friends in residency who have walked into rooms and people are just sitting butt naked in the chair or like on the table. And it's like, no, OK. And it's not like we're surprised by the actual body. I mean, we've seen it all, but it's just surprising when someone just drops their pants right in front of you or you walk in and someone's naked. So, yeah. In the future, if you're at a doctor's visit, if we're going to ask you to change, we will step out of the room to respect your privacy. And yeah, usually if a doctor has not come in to see you yet, you can leave your clothes on. We'll let you know if you need to get changed. All right, that's game. What's so important? Okay. I was looking at Bidwell. One second. Damn, I gotta go. But you played a good game. You played a good game. I thought you sucked. Go get your grub on. I'm gonna say it again. Poor JD. He just... He's, I, I feel bad for him. He's just so sweet and everything sad just happens to him. Hopefully he will get the girl by the end of this episode though. I have faith. He's going to kiss her. Yes? Sorry to bother you, sir. 
Well, if it isn't sport. <laughs> How are things? Did you see Mr. Cavanaugh today? Yes. Yes, I did. Dr. Kelso, I just wanted to say that, well, as far as the whole sweetheart thing goes, maybe I overreacted. Are you sure? Because I wouldn't want you to be the least bit uncomfortable. <laughs> to tell you the truth, I have no idea what possessed me to say anything in the first place. I hate this. This makes me sad. Because it clearly makes her uncomfortable and she's backtracking on it because she got punished for saying something, for speaking up and standing up for herself. And this makes me sad. Yeah, absolutely no idea. Then run long, sweetheart. <laughs> Before I do, so. Bambi, are you giving me attitude? What if I am? So you guys know, I think everybody knows who's a fan of the show because you guys said it to me in like one of my first reviews, but the x-ray in the intro is backwards, the chest x-ray, the heart is on the right side instead of the left side. The x-ray in the back of this scene is also backwards. So I think that's kind of like a, maybe a nod to the intro. So like that. Because if you are so stupid as to confront the chief of medicine over some quasi-offensive endearment, then you've just got to go ahead and replace the captain of your brain ship because he's drunk at the wheel. You're right. I need to learn to pick my battles. Thank you, sir. You guys are right. I, I love this guy. He understands the value of me time. He is teaching lessons while he's not even meaning to. I mean, I don't, I don't like that he called her stupid, but aside from that, pretty pretty chill guy. I think I think I would like him. Actually, in real life, I probably wouldn't like him. He would probably make me cry, but that, that's that's beside the point. For this show, I like him so far. What happened? There's no infection. He's diabetic, so when someone gave him oh, yeah. insulin during post-op, when he wasn't eating, he became hypoglycemic. Oh, that's funny, because the only person that could have given him insulin... Uh-oh. I gave him insulin. Twice. Oh, he's fine, Bambi. I gave him an amp of D50 and he's eating now. But you should probably give him a glass of orange juice in about an hour. Carla, thank you so much. You totally saved my ass. No, it wasn't me. Look, Turk. Come on, man. You know I always got your back. I know. Oh, I'm gonna cry. That's so sweet. Uh, yeah. So, see, they're, they're still besties. Turk Scott is back. Honest mistake, easily fixable. I mean, hypoglycemia is no joke, but in the hospital, you're getting labs pretty frequently. He got his meal. He's going to get his OJ. He's good to go. I'm glad Turk didn't mess up. That would have been sad, but I like that he's got his back. Besties. I miss you so much. It hurts sometimes. Um, you've had a rough day, so I'm gonna let that go for now. Thank you. We're gonna find time to hang, man. It's just that we're both really swamped right now, and I'm hanging out with Carla a lot, I know, but tell me, if there was someone you were into, you wouldn't be doing the same thing. Oh, crap. I try to discover Did Nurse Robert sell you these? You don't even want to hear about the day I've had. You're right. Kiss me. Right now? We can wait like three, four seconds. But I, I just ate. I feel gross. Not gross. Pretty. Come here. JD, can we just talk for a second? It never fails. It was too late. Uh. 
I'm so sad. I thought they were going to get together. I think they'll still get together, but now it's going to, now it's going to be longer. We have to wait. I was like, there's no way in a TV series that these characters are going to get together so quickly. But, but Kirk and what's her name did? Went to high school with her. We worked at Penguin's Yogurt. <laughs> She'll come around. <laughs> the first few weeks here have been so hard for me. Mentally, physically, emotionally. It's like math camp all over again. Not that I've ever been to math camp. It's just an expression. I use it all the time. Come on. Anyway. I know the idea of choosing friendship over sex seems like the last thing any guy wants to hear. But you know what? This time it actually made sense to me. Besides, I challenge anyone to survive being an intern without having a close group of friends to lean on. That is so true. Intern year was probably one of the hardest years of my life. Probably was the hardest year of my life. It is exhausting. You're working so much and you are not getting enough sleep and you're learning so much and you're just exhausted and you definitely need a good group of people to lean on whether that's your family whether that's close friends you're not going to make it through without some support so I agree with JD but I'm still sad they didn't get together he just seems like such a good guy I just feel like he's going to make such a good boyfriend one day so Hopefully he finds his love, even if it's not her, but I guess we'll find out in the future. I think they get together. I think I, I know that somehow. Maybe somebody told me. Or did I watch an episode where they were together later? In, I, I don't know. I can't believe you lost our bottle opener. Yeah, I know. I miss it so much it hurts sometimes. You're a bad person. Don't judge me. All right. That was a good one. That was another good one. Thank you guys so much for watching and thanks for following along as I go through this series. I'm super excited to continue. This show is great. And honestly, it's hard not to just sit down and start binge watching it because when I watch, I got to film and everything. And I really just want to kick back in one of these chairs over here and just watch the whole series. But I won't do that. I will go through it with you guys. I promise that I will not watch any episodes without you. So you have my word. I hope you enjoyed the video today. If you did, please don't forget to give it a like, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you next time.